Oh my gosh. I've completely mangled my wrist. Alright, uh, no video today, guys. I'm not doing no video with a broken wrist. Hello, Star Citizens. My name is Ly Sergic, and today we're going to be taking a look at the highly anticipated Space Whale. I mean, Avenger. The Avenger, yes. I don't know why people call it a space whale. Honestly, I think it's one of the best looking ships in the game. And uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at it and doing a detailed overview of all the features on the Avenger, taking a look at the damage states, and doing some flying and shooting. So, unless you've been living under a space rock, you probably know that the Avenger is now playable in Arena Commander. So you can fly it around, you can do Vandal Swarm, I guess you can even race it if you so desire. So I would like to give you guys a little overview of what is probably my favorite ship, right up there with the M50 and the Freelancer. So the Avenger is lovingly known as the Space Whale, but I think it looks more like a jet fighter, personally. Um, I think it looks very slick. I don't, I don't know why some people don't like the aesthetics of it. I believe it's the most spaceship looking, or spaceship-y uh, ship. We probably have the game, maybe maybe the Freelancer as well, but this looks more like, you know, a, a conventional spaceship type deal, space shuttle kind of thing, and I really like the aesthetics of it. In general, I think it's a very pretty ship, and um, it, it's definitely got some, some nice lines, some nice curves. It's curvy. The Avengers curvy, and if you don't like it, you can just go curve off a cliff. So... Some of the features I would like to highlight of the Avenger before we uh, take it down to the landing platform and look at the damage states. Um, in in universe, the lore of the Avenger says that it's uh, the standard UEE patrol craft. So this is what maybe you might see some uh, police using in the game or some like standard you know patrol militia type variants. Um, they could be, you know, chasing you down in an Avenger, and it's looking like it's going to be uh, one of the bounty hunter ships of choice. It looks like it's going to be a very good bounty hunting or interdiction or maybe even search and rescue type ships because one of the major features of the Avenger is that even though it's a single seat fighter slash interceptor, um, it features, and I'm going to show you, we just have to duck under here real quick. It features these stasis pods, or uh, prisoner pods, as they call them. So the prisoner pods are basically somewhere that once you shoot somebody down or disable their ship, if you're able to capture them alive, I believe you could activate one of them. There we go. <clears throat> if you can possibly capture somebody alive, this doesn't look very comfortable, but you could obviously shove them in there, and then they are yours. And this will be used for bounty hunting. Um, if you haven't heard, you could actually bounty hunt characters. So if you've been pirating or taking some things that aren't yours, or uh, you know, just in general causing havoc, the UEE will set out a bounty on your head, and once we have the Persistent Universe in place, if, they, if you have a bounty on your head, someone can hunt you down and actually capture your character. There's some debate, and they haven't really totally worked out how this is going to work, like if you're actually going to have to wait, or if you wait for a certain amount of time, and then it just goes on to say, okay, so you went to jail and you got released, but Chris Roberts said a little bit about uh, how there's going to be some sort of... Um, you know, like, jail breakout mission that if you get captured too many times or they don't let you off with a warning or your bounty was high enough, uh, you'll go to jail and you'll have to do a short, like, space station breakout mission, which would be, I think, would be kind of cool, uh, you know, to have, like, a little mission set up to deter players from piracy or deter players from getting caught, at least, so that if, uh, you know, you get caught too many times, you'll have to find your own way back to your hangar. You know, you're going to have to hitch a ride through space back to your hangar before you can return to your piratey activities. So that's, I think that's a really cool feature. So yeah, like I said, the Avenger is going to be, or was at some point, the standard UEE patrol craft for uh, local police type things. So let's take another look at the outside real quick before we get, hop into some gameplay. It's really hard to get out. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to change that. So weapon features. When it comes to weapons, the Avenger is outfitted with on the wings. These are non-gimbaled mounts, so they're, they're fixed. You can't aim them with your mouse or a joystick whatever. Uh, these are Sucker Punch Distortion Cannons made by Joker. So these little distortion cannons, they don't actually damage the hull of a ship when you fire it at them. Uh, they apparently will drain energy from the power source itself of the ship. So these would be ideal for disabling ships. I think they're going to come in really handy if you're trying to 
be a pirate or a bounty hunter or in general just uh, kind of immobilize somebody without having to, you know, cock up their ship or damage the valuable goods or persons inside. So I think that's definitely going to be a really good uh, weapon to use for, for that kind of gameplay. And I think that my personal suggestion would be that if you had a Cutlass and an Avenger, that would make a really good team because they both have, you know, some ship disabling weapons and tracker beams. That would make a really good team for capturing somebody alive or keeping their ship untouched while you, you know, want to raid their cargo bay or what have you. Then, next on the wing, we have these Stalker IR missiles. So the Stalker IR missiles are pretty cool. Um, they don't t have a, like, timed weapon lock. Once you click your middle mouse button or whatever button you're using, um, as soon as you click that button, you have the lock, and then you just have to click it again and hold it to launch them. So you can also lock more than one missile at once. So if you want to lock all four missiles onto them and then shoot them, it looks really cool. And if you check out my last Star Citizen video, uh, the Arena Commander 1.0 update video, you'll see how badass it looks when you launch all four of these missiles at once. I did it completely on accident, and it was very satisfying to look at. So before we go to the front there, the Avenger also has what is kind of dark and hard to see, a very large engine. The Avenger has a TR-5 engine. I don't know if that's going to stick around. I would imagine it's not. I would imagine they're more likely to downsize it to a 4 or something. But for a single-seat fighter craft with a relatively small cargo bay, this is a comparatively huge engine. And it shows because the Avenger is very, very nimble at dogfights. And it looks like it'll have some good atmospheric flying capabilities for when you're, uh, you know, on planet level or inside the atmosphere because it has those large intakes up top. So now we're at the front of the ship, and you'll see it has two little nubs up there, which I'm not sure what those are, but maybe they're some sort of sensor array or something like that. Um, the overall aesthetic of the ship reminds me of an A-10 Warthog. Uh, if you've seen those before, they're the big planes with the big two engines on them that look like, you know, giant turbines. I don't know what else a jet engine would look like, but it's got two engines on top of the wings, uh, almost attached to the fuselage. And what really makes it reminiscent of the A-10 Warthog is this big gun on the front. This is also a size 5 weapon mount. That's a very large weapon. That's like capital ship size weapons, or at least like cruiser size weapons. So this thing is pretty badass. I would imagine that to keep it not overpowered, they've maybe toned it down a little bit and it'll be a little stronger, or maybe they'll downgrade it to a size four. But this is meant to be uh, just like the Warthog itself, uh, the A-10 Warthog, which I would imagine was probably the inspiration for the Avenger. Just like the A-10 Warthog, um, this is more like a spaceship built around a gun than vice versa. Uh, on the A-10 Warthog, which I'm kind of getting off topic here, but on the A-10 Warthog, uh, they had to actually physically build the plane around the gun to see how it was going to work because the, the 30 millimeter cannon they added to it was so huge. And that's probably how badass this weapon is going to be once all the weapons are balanced. That's another thing I just want to mention to you guys while I'm hopping in the ship here is that while you're playing Arena Commander, you know, I see a lot of people complaining about, oh, the, this Cutlass is useless, you know. Why can't I ever get in on this side? <laughs> I see a lot of people complaining about, oh, the Cutlass is useless, and the, the this is useless, and the, the Aurora is not strong enough, the Hornet's the only ship that matters, no one's going to be able to fly anything with the Hornet, da 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 so on and so forth. And what am I doing wrong? And uh, I, I disagree with that. I, I think that those people are severely misinformed because that's not the, the level of, of game fidelity we're at. What am I doing wrong, guys? Someone please help me. <laughs> oh, I don't get in the ship this way. I knew that. Yeah, I've really been... <laughs> clearly, I have a lot of uh, flight time in this ship. No, I, I totally knew that. And I have been flying this ship a lot so I can do a, a good review. I'm sorry. Uh, derp, derp. So anyway, the, for the people who are, you know, naysayers as far as when it comes to, you know, oh, the the Hornet is the only viable fighting ship in the full game. Everybody's just going to be using a Hornet, this, that, and the third. I, I completely disagree because, first of all, look how far we are from release. There's going to be at least another year of balancing and tweaking and bug fixing and all that stuff until this game actually comes out. We are nowhere near release. It's, it's not going to happen anytime soon to what the hell is going on here. Oh, my joystick's plugged in. Alrighty, we are in Vandal Swarm with the Avenger. Let's see how it performs. Once my frame rate starts dropping and everything loads in and all the textures cache. 
I have to say, Arena Commander does perform very smoothly once everything gets going. I'm quite impressed with it. So where is our Vandal Buddies? C will target the nearest target to you. That is uh, something that's quite useful most of the time. And especially with a ship like the Avenger, I don't... Oh, jeez. I don't recommend... Uh, I don't recommend flying at full throttle at all times, and I recommend making use of decoupled mode. Because the Avenger, like I said before, has a very, very powerful engine and is quite susceptible to high G-forces when you are dogfighting. And if you need to make a quick turn, sometimes it's actually uh, easier to... Come on. Die already, will you? Are you serious? <laughs> Sometimes when you're making a quick turn, it's easier to pop into and out of decoupled mode uh, on and off. In, like, when you're about to turn, hit decoupled mode, turn around, and then fly right back into decoupled, uh, into coupled mode, like so. Ready? So I'm going to turn this way, decouple, turn, and then recouple when I'm aligned with my vector and maybe tap the boost real quick to get yourself situated in the right direction because uh, that... That kind of avoids really high G-forces, and you can actually keep the throttle at 100 instead of consistently adjusting it. Sorry, I'm getting used to talking again. I'm like, my brain is not working today. So that's the closest Vandal to us. We're going to uh, roll up on him real quick. And as I get close, I kind of back off the throttle a little bit so I can get a better aim on this guy. And also, with the new aiming system, it's a lot easier to aim with your distortion cannons or your whatever gimbaled weapons you have. When the little pieces fall off of their ships, I always mess up and think that uh, it's it's not, you know, um, that that's the piece that fell off is the part that I'm trying to shoot, especially with Vandal. It always distracts me. And it looks like in this version of Arena Commander, the uh, Vandal, act, I mean, the distortion cannon actually does damage the Vandal when uh, it's supposed to damage the power supply, not the actual hull of their ship. But I was getting uh, damage indicators and points going up when I was shooting them with the distortion cannon. But I was able to keep a much better beat on that guy, even though I am not warmed up at all right now. I was able to keep a much better beat on that guy when I wasn't at full uh, throttle, as opposed to just kind of coasting up next to him to try to shoot at him. But as you can see, even though I'm aiming like an idiot right now, this, uh, the Kruger Tiger Strike completely tears guys up. But it does run out of ammo very quick and take a little bit of time to reload. However, it doesn't seem to heat up too bad, so I'm totally happy with that. I don't know why this guy didn't want to go down. There we go. So yeah, I keep the throttle at about 75%, and it seems easy enough to, uh, stick with people and not experience really heavy Gs while you're, uh, while you're dogfighting, as long as you keep the throttle around 75-ish percent. So let's do the first three waves and see how things work out. As we're rolling up on these guys now, we'll, we'll save the missiles for the fun part with the, uh, the Vandal Prime, even though he might flare them off. And as I'm on approach here, I usually do one quick flyby to get out of everybody's way, and then I tap C again to lock on to the closest guy decouple, point at him, and then get pointed in his direction before backing off the throttle a little bit. That's the only thing that's really annoying is that lens flare, and a quick roll will usually get it out of the way. And the whole lens flare concept is a little silly, because you know air aircraft glass is not going to have lens flare. That's like the first thing they make sure is not a problem. And I should have used the space brake there. That would have been a more suitable choice to make so I could have uh, kept my kept my beat on him so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit now we're gonna try to get close to this guy and he's dead kill confirmed oh, still three of them come on guys should do better than that see the Avenger breaks very quick so it's really easy when they try to do those weird maneuvers that usually only Vandal can pull off. Very easy to uh, just slam on the space break and then you're sitting right in front of him with a nice beat on him. 
Also, when someone breaks like this, don't be afraid to go get another target, because they're going to go lick their wounds and come back anyway. But sometimes with the Vandal, it's just a little bit easier to finish them off. See, I didn't even make that drastic of a maneuver there, but since I was at 100%, I read it out very quickly. And a tactic that I didn't use a lot before, but I'm getting much more used to now, is always, always, always adjusting the throttle. Let's let this guy get a little distance between me and him. And we'll do a good old Avenger strafing run on him. I'm completely out of ammo, aren't I? That's kind of poop, isn't it? It's going to be hard to kill this guy with the distortion cannons. <laughs> oh, man. Of course they only give you two clips. All right. So let's see how the missiles perform. Obviously, these do really quick locks. You just give them two taps. Bang. Didn't even need bulb missiles, missiles, but you just give it two taps and they're dead. Really, really easy to use. But there, you don't have many. You only have four. And they seem to track very well. They they kind of go for a really quick approach, and then they usually flare out and slow down a little before making the final uh, kill approach. What the hell did I crash into? Did I crash into him? Oh, good. He did my job for me. Is there another one? There is another one. Son of a bitch. I believe on the third wave it, uh, it's going to regenerate my ammo. Maybe not. I'm out completely, though. So when you're out of ammo and you want to aim with this gun, it's a good time to uh, activate relative mode because then you can kind of get a little bit more accurate. Boom. I'm dead. <laughs> get a little bit more accurate with the mouse there. So that was fun. Hopefully it'll restock my ammo while we're dead here. There we go, now I got my main gun back. So let's let's do this in relative mode now so I can kind of simulate using a joystick because this is the effect that you're going to get when you're using a joystick. So we're going to go into relative mode, lock on to the nearest guy, and let's go tear him up. But yeah, like I said, the, the Avenger is very, very nimble. It's, it's really quite easy to use. I like to go for the Vandal Prime first because it's easier to just get him out of the way and then kill the rest of the shitheads. It's really, really easy to dogfight in. I would say it's almost as natural to dogfight in as the Hornet. So let's slow down here a little bit, shall we? Oh, he shot a missile at me, didn't he? Didn't do much to me. And I just slam on the space brake like that, and it keeps me in a good position to shoot at this guy continuously. But I'm not spending too much time sitting still as well. Right there, I slammed on the, the thruster to go up. There's a guy right behind me. He's really pissing me off. There he is. All right, well, let's try to get him off of our tail, and then we'll come back around on Little King here. I am not very good in relative mode, but it is a lot easier to aim your distortion cannons in relative mode. Obviously, as you can see, I was getting some good hits like that. There we go. Perfect. And we killed ourselves again. Awesome, but we got him. Like I said, I'm not very good at relative mode once again, but uh, we'll go back to normal mode so I can show off the missiles again. I just wanted to show you guys with the relative mode how easy it is to aim your uh, sucker punch cannons if you need to disable a ship or you need to use your non-gimbal weapons. It's not that hard to do. It's actually really not. Because it's much harder to aim this crosshair when you have like a dead zone like that. Um, it's a little hard to get used to. You definitely need to get used to it because there's more of a delay before your thrusters actuate in either direction it feels a little different when you're moving around so that's why I was having a little bit of trouble but it if you're generally flying in it or you really need to use your um, your non gimbaled weapons it's quite easy to do and like I said man that this nose gun the the a10 30 millimeter cannon that I keep comparing it to it's it's quite the beauty it really does tear dudes up when you catch the vandals stopped like that, you get a really good shot on them. 
And I don't have to let him get away like most ships do because I can accelerate so quick. I can stay right on his tail. A stupid lens flare. But see, quick roll and it gets right out of the way. Killed him. Where's the next one? Where is he? Oh, there he is. Off we go. One of my squad mates get taken out. Looks like that might be the case. Once again, you gotta be careful, because like I said, it's very easy to red out or black out in this ship. It, it definitely happens all the time. See how quick this thing breaks? When you need to make a quick maneuver so that you can keep a beat on these guys, it's stupidly easy. This is probably one of the only ships that I would say the the turret... See, I went to go follow the stupid debris that he let off. Um, I would say this is probably one of the only ships where the, the space turreting maneuver that everyone gets mad about in uh, dogfighting in multiplayer, the space turret strategy is really viable because it's so easy to just stop in place and then spin around. I don't hold the space bar, I just tap it and then back off the throttle a little so that I can get right up in these guys grills and just light them up. So let's waste all our missiles in the next wave and that will be it for dogfighting. As you can see, like I said, I'm not warmed up at all right now. I just have to restart the game because my computer is being stupid and uh, it's really, really easy to to just tear guys up. It's, it really is. The Avenger is an extremely capable dogfighter and I am so happy that I bought it because it is kick ass, man. Alright, who wants a missile first? And once again, I would leave G-Safe on but Comstab off because even with G-Safe on, it's very easy to black, off, black out or red out with this ship. So these missiles can lock on from over a thousand meters. And that's definitely fun. Boom. Nothing like it, man. Nothing like it. So let's strafe out of this guy's way. And pop off a missile at him. Bang, dead. And I believe I've only got one more. I shouldn't have wasted two because these guys really don't flare. Yeah, these one can lock on from farther away. It's definitely, uh, definitely a lot easier to use them as well. But apparently they're easier to evade. So I guess if the Vandal were using more flares... Uh, yeah, IR, so that would be flares. It would be easier to evade these missiles. But with the nose gun, and I'm assuming you could probably load up higher capacity missile racks in this baby, you really can't go wrong. It's really easy to kill these guys. Vandal Swarm is cake, and the multiplayer online dogfighting I've been doing is pretty cake as well. Like I said, because the Avenger is so maneuverable, it can go from stop to start so quick. It really is quite easy to stay on a Vandal or a player's tail and just pepper him to death with this gun. And I'm sure the, uh, the Sucker Punch cannons will be very useful in the Persistent Universe as well for disabling ships. They seem to be pretty powerful. Is this guy crashing enemy? Are you serious? Where the hell is he? There we go. Yeah, I see a lot of players not making use of their space break, and when you're having these close range, back and forth, spinning aroundy fights, it's quite easy to just slam on the space break, go in the direction you want to go, or, de or and then, you know, nail on the throttle. But um, it's just as easy to decouple while doing that as well. And that will get you a little more distance than the space break. So if you want to keep it close range when you guys are trying to turn around when you, you know you're having a turning fight and getting a beat on each other if you want to keep it close range use a space break if you want to keep it long range I would use personally the uh, the decoupled mode so to recap space break for close range when you're having a turning battle decouple for long range so if I want to turn on this guy I space break turn and shoot him if I want to get some more range between us I decouple turn recouple and then shoot him so that's going to be it, guys. Thanks so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something about the Avenger. If you have any questions or I forgot anything, don't be afraid to leave a comment. Uh, please like and subscribe to see tons more Star Citizen videos, PC hardware reviews, Star Citizen ship reviews, Far Cry, Assassin's Creed Unity, 
and a couple more new games that I have lined up for everybody. This has been Lysergic, signing out.